Okay, now we have a graphics card. You don't have to have a graphics card with your mod. You may not need one. You may use the integrated one on the motherboard. However, this one needs a discrete graphics card, as I've been told by my friend. So, this is what I have. It's quite a, a small one compared to some of the ones that you may be getting. And I really don't understand why, but all the cool decorational fan bit goes on the bottom. And you'll find, with this one especially, you have two sections to the um, to the slot and another little tail bit there. This can only go in one slot. You may have several of them on your board. And it's the one with the little clippy thing at the back. Before we can put this in, we need to take out the back plate. It's going to come out of here. These are back plates, expansion slots, so you can put extra stuff in all of these different slots. So first, you need to either unscrew the back plates or push them out, which my model requires. So they come out like this, we end up with a piece of metal. And <clears throat> we can simply slot it in from here. I pull back my little clip things because I've got all sorts of stuff here. So it lines up like this and you push it in until you hear a click. That was the click there. That is nice and securely in. But now we need to put the back in because this still is a little bit wobbly. This is where it comes out. So I need to, on my model, all I need to do is push in these little tabs. On yours, there is a screw hole and you just need to take your screwdriver and you will screw it in like that, however it goes. Now we need some power. Your power supply, you need to make sure it is enough to power everything inside your computer. The graphics card is usually the most power thirsty thing. This recommends a power supply of 250 watts, I think. And if I add up everything else, my processor, which is 125, the RAM is probably 25, and you add everything up and go for the biggest power supply that you can, or you can just junk it out and get an absolutely massive one. Now, power supplies in a lot of cases today go at the bottom, and they go with the fan facing towards your stuff. This one goes at the top in this case, and slots in like this. Then I put screws in the back, the case screws, into the four holes at the side. So now I've screwed this in the back, it will only go up one way because of the way the screws go, so you won't get it wrong. Now that is everything on the back sorted. We need to plug in all of the power. Your desk will probably be getting quite messy now. Welcome to the technician's world. So, we take the elastic bands off our power cables. And there is an absolute rat's nest of stuff to plug in. So, the first one that I do is the motherboard power. This goes into your motherboard like this. It plugs into the large socket and you push it in until you hear a snap. Hopefully not your motherboard breaking. That's in. <clears throat> you put that to one side if you can. Then you need to plug in the rest. Often your graphics card will require extra power which will go in the side of your graphics card. This one doesn't. It's a discrete graphics card. Next we need to put in all of these things. So we split them out and we want to equally balance them depending on what we have in the computer. So if we've got a lot of stuff then we use these for the CD drives, these for something else and these for something else. We want to balance it out between them. And that is quite important when building a new computer. <clears throat> so with our CD drive we get the right type 
this is a legacy power cable rather than the standard ATX one. And then I have another one for my hard drive, which I'm going to put at the bottom. <clears throat> the last cable that we need to plug in is one of these. It is a four port one. Some motherboards have them, mine does. And this goes towards the top in a little four port one. Now, as you can see, it is a rat's nest. That is quite horrible looking. So we have some elastic bands that they gave us originally, and I can use these for a couple of them. So with mine, I'm going to use an elastic band to wrap a couple of these cables up together. And you basically want to put these away so it's not too invasive to the system as neatly as you can make it and you also want it so you're able to pick one up later if you want to add anything and put it straight in. So these cables I'm not going to be using. I use another band. The other thing you can use are cable ties such as this. The clues are in the words. So these ones are not going to be used. I'm going to tie these up all in one heap, but I can easily pull one out if I need to later. And then just tighten it again. So it's still neat. There we go. One small heap of cables. I took that up the top. That's why I left a drive bay at the top so I can tuck these in. And some other stuff that you can get is cable wrap, tie wrap. This is a spirally one and you put your cables in the middle and wrap it around so I'm going to use that for this because it'll probably make it a bit neater. Okay now we have all of our power set up and everything is in place processor, RAM, CD drive, hard drive and graphics card and of course our power supply that we've just put in. Now we need to connect things these are the SATA cables I'm going to be using most stuff uses these new SATA cables Otherwise, you use those big old chunky ribbon things which I threw down there some time ago. So I found SATA port 1 on the motherboard, which is this one here. It doesn't matter which ones that you put these in, but I like to do it numerically so I know what's going on. And plug that into my hard drive like so. Put the cables down there. Make it a little bit neat. And continue for the... CD drive, which is at the top. And plug it in the top here. Snap. And put this down the bottom in SATA 2. Now, my case is a little bit special. It also has these fans that I can clip onto the sides, which is pretty cool, I think. And these plug straight into the Molex adapters that we have on our power cables. So, we have a couple free. There's one here. Okay, and once our fans are attached, we need to put this back on the same way we took it off. So we leave about an inch gap when we put it on until it slots in place like that. Make sure it slots in on all angles and Okay, now one last thing before we turn on, we need to make sure that our screen display is plugged in down at the bottom for our graphics card and not the ones at the side here, which are for the motherboard, the integrated graphics. Otherwise you won't get anything come out the screen. So make sure that our power switch is set to on, make sure the power is on, and there we go on the successful computer. <coughs> yep, and those beeps tell us that it's working okay. I haven't got an operating system on the hard drive, which is what you would expect, because we haven't installed anything. I'll leave installing up to you, and I probably will talk about that in a later video, and how to install Windows and other such devices. So, that is it for today. Goodbye.